Welcome to this Beyond Zero e-learning module. This is one of the catch-up modules for the WITS RHI Advanced HIV and TB course. Um, this particular module will be uh, part four of the PMDCT series um, and will cover specifically prevention during labor and delivery of transmission. So why do we have a whole module just dedicated to labor and delivery and preventing transmission during this time? Um, and this little slide just reminds us of the risk of transmitting HIV to the baby. And you can see there that about 10 or 25% of transmissions already happen during pregnancy. Um, but 35 to 40% of children who will be HIV positive um, will get the HIV during labor and delivery. And then another 35 and 40% um, during breastfeeding if the mother chooses to breastfeed. So to put it differently, if we look at this particular slide, that 12 hours of labor has the same risk of transmission as 18 months of breastfeeding. Um, and so over a time period, the most critical time where you want to make sure all your interventions are in place is during delivery. Um, and during the antenatal period, this, the focus, therefore, is making sure the viral load is suppressed by the time the mom delivers. Um, and in our next module, we'll look at post-exposure prophylaxis of how we also cover the infant after delivery. So let's start um, simply with a mom arriving in the delivery room. Um, and firstly, the most important question at this stage is to find out what her HIV status is. And um, you do that even before you take the blood pressure. And if she's HIV negative at this point, we will obviously repeat the HIV test. Now remember that counseling done during, um, during pregnancy will counsel the mom about the fact that she will be tested regularly if she's HIV negative, that she will be tested during labor and again at six weeks afterwards. And so it's not necessary to go through a whole pre-counseling process. If she has that test before during delivery and she's been HIV negative, you can simply inform with her and have a, have a quick check and then do the test. If the HIV status is unknown, then obviously we're going to do an HIV test, but this might um, need some pre-counseling if she's had not had counseling during her pregnancy. And then the patient might already be HIV positive um, and on art. And at this point, you want to see if you can establish what the last viral load was. And we will continue with her normal ARVs with the usual timing. So let's look at a scenario of a mom that's arrived in the labor room, um, unbooked, uh, and you can have a record that, oh, look, there was an HIV test done, but it was previously negative, and now she's HIV positive today. Um, and this is a high-risk woman. If she has converted recently, that baby is at a very high risk for transmission because the mom's viral load will be so high. So in labor, we want to try and get that viral load down as dramatically as possible. And so we give stat dose nevirapine, um, which has been found already one of the first um, big interventions we found that makes such a difference with mother-to-child transmission. The virapine is a very powerful drug and it brings down the viral load very, very quickly. Um, and to help cover the tail of that single dose of virapine and also give the, it a bit of extra um, robust to your, robustness to your regime, you will add single dose Truvada. Um, and then because labor might be several hours, you will also start the mother on AZT and give a dose of AZT every three hours throughout labor. This will obviously happen until the baby is delivered. And then once the baby is delivered the next day, um, she will get the fixed dose combination, the tenofovir, imitricitabine, and efavirenz. Um, and that will be when she will be initiated on, on ARVs. Um, obviously, we're going to be doing counseling and adherence support. We will take the baselines as we would do for any mom that wants starting on, on ARVs. And we want to be able to make sure we review the results of those baseline tests within three or six days um, postnatally. The baby, we're going to cover in a lot more detail in the um, post-exposure um, lectures. Uh, but we will be doing a birth PCR. The baby is going to get 12 weeks of nevirapine. And we'll be doing a PCR at 10 weeks and then again at 18 weeks. If you have a mom that is on ARVs, 
um, then we're going to continue her usual ARVs, the normal intervals. And it's quite important if a mom's going to be in labor for several days to make sure that those that doesn't actually get missed just because she's now admitted to hospital. Um, and you want to look back in your maternity record to confirm the result of the last viral load um, and when she started out. And this is going to be very important um, to make a decision about your post-exposure prophylaxis once the baby um, is born. When we deliver babies um, of moms, even if the viral load is suppressed, we still want to have safe delivery techniques. Remember, we are only measuring the viral load in the blood, and it might be that there is more virus um, that is actually within the, the tissues around the, around the birth canal. So we want to avoid prolonged rupture of membranes. Um, we want to avoid assisted instrumental delivery, if at all possible, any invasive monitoring procedures, um, episiotomy, if possible. And remember also invasive suctioning of the neonate's nose and airway. Um, and if there's meconium stayed like or and you need to suck, you need to do the suction under direct vision. If you need to do a cesarean section, whether it's an emergency cesarean section or a um, elective cesarean section, it's very important that all HIV positive women receive prophylactic antibiotics. And then we give them a single dose of navirapine and a single dose of Truvada um, prior to the cesarean section. When the mom gets followed up, it's important that we give a follow-up plan, not only for the baby, but also for the mother. So very clear, if she's now been diagnosed with HIV or she already has HIV, that she's clear about what needs to happen. So the three-day postpartum visit is not just about following up on the baby, also to see how the mom is doing. The six weeks visit, um, at which stage we will decide further about the post-exposure prophylaxis. But with the mom to particularly talk about when is her next ARV collection due, where she's going to be collecting that, when the next viral load is due, depending on what the last viral load was, and any other monitoring bloods that still needs to happen. We also need to have follow-up conversations before she goes home on infant feeding and contraception. Um, and all of this that is being discussed needs to be very clear on the discharge documentation um, that is being sent out and to make sure that the mother um, will be, has been well primed to pass on that discharge documentation to whichever clinic she's going to um, be followed up at. And probably the most important um, uh, comment in this whole slide is linking her to care. And this is not something that is at the moment routinely happening at our hospitals. So we are looking more and more at how do we make sure that the clinics are aware of the fact that the mom has delivered um, and that the mom needs to be following up at the clinic. Quite often we only give a discharge letter to the mom um, and it's up to the mother to then go to the clinic and book in at the clinic. Um, and we are looking more and more at helping hospitals and clinics set up systems where the clinics actually have a booking book that the hospitals have the telephone numbers of all of these clinics um, and that the clinic is actually called and the mommy is booked in for that clinic for a specific day. And important to make sure that that day obviously suits the clinic, but also suits the mom. Find out where is she going to be? Is she going to be able to get to the clinic? Um, and therefore, when the mom does not show up, the clinic actually will be able to pick up the fact that she has um, the referral loop has not been closed. So that gives a summary of the important points in covering um, mother-to-child transmission during labor and delivery. Please see the next module for the post-exposure prophylaxis, an essential component um, of also reducing transmission from the mother to the baby during the delivery process.